Hi YouTube. So here I've got this Dell Inspiron 15 5000 series. Um, I just got it a few weeks ago actually, and this one in particular is a 5593. Pretty similar to all the other Inspirons out there, like I said, but today I'm going to be upgrading the RAM on it. And this process should be super similar regardless of what Inspiron 15 5000 you're using. The layout should be pretty much the same. They do vary a little bit, but again, pretty much the same. So obviously what you're going to need is the RAM, and some screwdrivers. And we're gonna need a Phillips head that's pretty small. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I'll do this one right here. So, obviously to start off taking these screws off, and what I'd like to do, and this is a very good trick, is make a little mini map of the screws that you're taking out. So like I said, I'm building a little mini map of where the screws go on the laptop so I know exactly which ones go where. Usually laptops all use the same screws, but sometimes a couple screws can be a different size. You don't want to mix those up. So the screws near the hinges uh, are captive, so they don't like to come out on their own. Just go ahead and leave them be. Don't try to jam them out. So I finished taking all the screws out, and the next step is to actually pull the bottom off. Uh, there are little tabs that like to hold it in so that the bottom doesn't come off super easily. So you need an object that's uh, firm but that isn't going to scrape the laptop apart. I have my old ID card for the school that I went to, so I'm just going to go ahead and run that on the inside here. If you do this a lot, it's usually a good idea to have a more official tool for the job. They make these little um, silicone things that you can actually use to... Uh, run along the inside is guaranteed not to scratch anything, but I'm being careful so it shouldn't be an issue. This is actually my least favorite part of taking apart any modern laptop. Kind of just got to go to where it gives you the least resistance and keep working there. You have to be careful yet firm, it's, it's kind of difficult, honestly. Once you get to a certain point, you can just use your hands to kind of gently pull it up. Again, this is my least favorite part of disassembling any laptop. And you don't want to do this too many times. I wouldn't recommend doing this over and over again. Right? Try to make sure all your stuff is done at once, so you, don't have to take, so you don't have to take your laptop apart again. Now, before you do anything, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and disconnect your battery. So I've got this little connector right here. Right here. Yeah, so what you have to do is you have to kind of get around the edge right there on either side and just kind of gently work it out. This sticker was kind of stuck to the, the uh, base of the connector, so we had to pull the sticker up and then kind of just use a screwdriver to let it out. So here's the overview of the inside. You've got your 2.5 inch drive bay right here. That can be for a hard disk or a SATA SSD, a SATA interface. So you got a lot of versatility there. You, you know, you could plop like a four terabyte little hard drive or a big hard drive in there. You could plop a SATA SSD, it's completely up to you. Here's your battery. Usually laptops uh, until a couple years ago would have a battery right here that you would be able to remove, but I've seen that been, that's been changing a lot. Here's your NVMe SSD. It's actually a tiny little guy. It's only about that long, which is pretty stellar. That is a half terabyte SSD right there. Isn't that incredible? It's a half terabyte in that little guy. I remember when you couldn't get, like, you know, any more than a 256 gigabyte in one that was, like, that long. All right, so that's pretty good. And of course, it does have space for a longer NVMe SSD, like a SX8200 Pro or something like that. But the SSD that comes with this laptop is actually pretty awesome. And here's your RAM. So it comes with a 1x8 chip in this configuration. Sometimes they come with 2x4, but for me, upgrading the RAM, putting another 4 gigs for a total of 12 is as simple as literally just slipping this in. You kind of just insert it at an angle and then push down. You should hear it click, and you're all set. And of course, your CPU is right under here with a heat sink and fan that ejects out the back. So now comes the part where I put it back together. So let's not forget to plug the battery back in. That would be really <laughs> disappointing to put all the screws back in and realize I forgot to do that. So kind of line it up and then push it gently. It actually helps to get a screwdriver and be really careful with it. But I, can, I heard it kind of plop in. 
just going to use a screwdriver to gently apply pressure to the top of the connector and make sure it's all the way in there. Excellent. And just for good measure, I'll push the sticker bit down just to make sure it's uh, going to hold that connector in just in case. Just go ahead and line up your uh, bottom here. Go ahead and give it a gentle push everywhere you go. Get some of those plastic tabs to snap back into place. Which is easier said than done. You have to be gentle yet firm. It's a fine line. And I like to tighten the screws, not so much to make them stupid tight. Uh, and not so much to kind of start stripping the the head of the screw. Just enough so that, that they're firm and they're not going to go anywhere. And of course I'm using the screws from the map that I made up here so I know exactly where each screw goes. Like I said, I'm pretty sure each screw is the exact same, but sometimes they're not. So it's really important just to go around the edges and make sure you didn't miss squeezing any bits back together. You can see I missed a spot right here, so I just have to firmly apply some pressure. It snaps back into place. I am just going to go ahead and boot the laptop up and make sure that's actually registering in that RAM I added. So when you start up, you just have to spam F2 a whole bunch. Let's hit that dial logo. There you go. It should give you a notification saying the amount of memory has changed. Just click BIOS setup. And then under the overview, so we can see 12 gigs of RAM, running at the proper speed. DIM A has 8 gigs, DIM B has 4 gigs, so it looks like we're all set. I'm just going to let it go into Windows and I'll go ahead and confirm that in the Task Manager as well. So if I open up Task Manager and go to the Memory tab, you can see I've got 12 gigs now at 2,667 megahertz and both slots used. It looks like we're all set. So that should be all for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it was informative and helpful.